Well, hello YouTube, this is Thomas Judge back once again on another cloudy and dismal day here in the UK. Today's another episode in my long-running series, Valiant Till the Last, in which I view the entirety of the Valiant Comics universe, specifically one deluxe edition at a time going through my collection. Now, in last week's video, we talked about Bloodshot Rising Spirit, which wasn't a deluxe edition, and frankly, it was a bit of a disappointment. But today, we're back into deluxe editions, and specifically, we are looking at this deluxe edition, which is Bloodshot, no suffix, no subtitle, nothing else. But I refer to this as Bloodshot 2019, because this is the uh, maxi-series of 12 issues that ran from 2019 till 2021. Now, this is what the cover looks like. Again, we're looking at a slightly different cover than we've seen previously, because this is sort of the post-2018 era of Bloodshot. Um, and I'll talk about that. A little bit more in a few minutes. I think that's going to be quite relevant actually to my, my thoughts and my opinion on this series. So this is the cover. I dislike this cover massively. In fact, as a general trend, all the covers for all the issues in this series are terrible, in my opinion. And I'll, I'll show you exactly what I mean. As a spine, this has got the normal formatting of spine. However, it has got um, just plain white as the as the background colour. So this is now the white spine era of um, Valiant, which is again sort of what Valiant Deluxe Editions post about 2018 started to look like. And here is the back, which is relatively conventional. If we look at the inside flaps, we've got the front French flap here. And then we have the rear French flap with the creators there. So moving that out of the way, let's have a look at the actual blocking on the cover so we're back to a silver foil uh, sorry a red foil which is great and um, the logo is done slightly differently than we've seen previously previously bloodshot had the um the the red solid circle earlier in the in the title so it's done slightly differently but that's fine because this i guess is indicative of this being the 2019 series if you have a look here at the spine that looks great so again, nice, clean, no number on the deluxe edition because this is a self-contained maxi series of 12 issues and a nice clean back. In terms of end pages, we have black pages there. And in terms of build quality, it's really nice. Hardly needed any stretching of the spine, but the spine is still um, very tight and robust and that's like, really nice, good, strong build, build quality. As usual, really nice, thick, glossy paper and really well composed. So this is the first page, deluxe edition, Bloodshot. And this is the contents. So it's split into four story arcs. Again, I'm not sure how this collects in trade paperbacks because, um, oh, frankly, I haven't bothered looking. So we have the first arc, which is called Gut Shot, which contains a brief excerpt from the Valiant Free Comic Book Day 2019 special, and then Bloodshot issues one to three. The next arc is called Long Shot. Hang on, let me just zoom in so you guys can see. It's called Long Shot, so it's Bloodshot issues four to six. The next arc is called Burned, which has got Bloodshot issue zero. That's issue zero of this 2019 series. And um, then issue seven till nine. And then what we have here is the uh, Valiant Year of Heroes Free Comic Book Day 2020 special, or an excerpt thereof. And then issues 10 to 12. And then also issue 12 includes a very small story at the end called The Hunted, which I'll talk about um, at the end as well. So worth highlighting in terms of the creators on, on this book... Uh, let's have a look at the cover again. So all of it is written by Tim Seeley. Um, a lot of it is drawn by Brett Booth. We're on the first six issues pretty much, and I think part of issue 10. And then we have like a variety of different creators involved here for art and, and various other tasks as well. Um, so let's just jump straight into it. So here we have Gut Shot. So this is the excerpt from the Free Comic Book Day special. And then these are the three issues. So um, here we have it here. It's got a little bit of a, um, I was about to say cold open. It's not, it's sort of like an in media res open, sorry, is what I mean, because it starts in the middle of a story which I think is based in Yemen. Um, it's it's just, yeah, it's decent. It's uh, a good opener. Um, yeah, and that takes us to there. And then it ends on like a brief cliffhanger, introducing yet another powerful paramilitary secret organisation, which is something that started to feel a little bit tedious during this arc of Bloodshot, because so far we have had the Harbinger Foundation, we have had um, Project Rising Spirit, we have had Gate, we have MI6 in the extra normal section, and we've had um, Omen. 
And now we have something called Black Bar, which is a new organization that's um, introduced here as meant to be even more secret and even more COVID. And then later on in the series, we get yet another organization, which is meant to be even more secret and even more covert again. Anyway, so this is the free comic book day special. This is issue one. This is what I mean about the covers being terrible. I don't like this as a cover because as a cover, this isn't the sort of artwork I personally like. But even worse, and even you know, a, a greater sin, is that it's really misleading in terms of the quality of the internal artwork. Because the internal artwork is by Brett Booth. And it's therefore exceptional. Um, it's just really good. Like, I, I will completely admit here that I'm, I'm slightly prejudiced here because I love Brett Booth's artwork. It doesn't matter what story he's, he's doing. His art is phenomenal. The, the composition, the framing, um, just the way that he does stuff is just brilliant. Um, he's done a lot of stuff in the 90s, he did a lot of stuff in Wildstorm, and to be honest, it's quite it's quite clear from the way this is drawn that this is a guy who draws in kind of a 90s excessive style, not as excessive as some of the 90s artists got. As far as I'm concerned, he really is just kind of walking that perfect balance between 90s comic book excess and... Um, sort of the more more modern, more min minimalist styles. Like he's really one of my favourite artists working in the industry today. Um, anyway, really great uh, first opening issue. Again, we've got the cover for the second issue. Sucks, looks really bland and rubbish. But then inside, we've got brilliant artwork. How about that as an image of Bloodshot just dive bombing into a um, into a rotor blade for a military helicopter? Just absolutely astonishing. Um, actually later on right at the back in the gallery you see the original script for this scene and it wasn't written like this, it was just a bloodshot attached helicopter. This is Brett Booth's composition and choice to do it like this and it's just brilliant. Um, yeah, so we get into it, uh, it's yeah, really well drawn, the story is really good, the writing is really good, the introduction of a new, uh, uh, I suppose antagonist is the best way to, to describe it, is um, done really really well. And like I say, I, I am slightly prejudiced because I'm inclined to enjoy anything done by this artist. I mean, look at that as an image. Absolutely brilliant. If I could get that as a display, I totally would. Just great stuff. Issue three, again, fantastic artwork. Again, the story is very strong. Um, I enjoyed this a great deal. Um, and here we have our first introduction of not only... Black Bar as a secret organisation that gets introduced in issue one, but we now have another secret organisation turning up that's even more, more secreter. And it's just, yeah, it gets a little bit silly in terms of the um, the organisations and the power players involved in the Valiant universe at this point. But yeah, all well and good. Anyway, that's the first story arc. Next story arc is another three issues here. Um, I'm not going to throw in spoilers. All I will say is the artwork continues being absolutely staggering. The storyline continues being really good. The covers continue being really rubbish. Um, so this image itself, look at this. Like what we have here. How 90s does that look? How Wildstorm does that look? If you're not familiar with Wildstorm, um, Google it, basically. But it's uh, it's an entire comics universe that one day I'm hoping to read and do a series on. But yeah, it's um, just, just so evocative from this artwork. And the framing and everything else. Anyway, loved it. And you know, don't let my obsession with the artwork throw you the storyline at least at this stage it's very very good um and then we have issue six again really disappointing cover all things considered I mean, you consider the potential of all the splash images they had within the comic that they could have used and instead they just had these um very not even minimalist just i think kind of reductive covers to be honest um and that takes us to here and then we have Burned, which is the next story arc, which starts with issue zero, and then we've got issues seven, eight, and nine. So issue zero is here. Now, this is something that I think is a little bit of a creative misstep, because issue zero is actually set well before issue, not even issue one. Do you know how the very first bit of this hardcover had a free comic book day issue? Well, issue zero is set literally right before this, and the last page of it segues into that into the, the story we looked at right at the beginning. So the fact that it's collected here is, um, yeah, it's, it's just a bit confusing. I, I was reading most of it, and then I was just like, when the hell did this happen? What Like, issue six ended with this, and then it, why has it gone here? And it took me literally until the end of issue zero to go, oh, right, okay, it's actually set way back here. Um, which is kind of frustrating because it's, it's a bit of a mapping issue, but this is now where we're going to start getting into issues to do with the series. So the first half... Brilliant, loved it, highly recommended. 
Second half from issue 7 onwards, the covers are getting slightly better. Unfortunately, the internal artwork gets a lot worse. I say that it's totally competent. The artwork is totally fine, much better than anything I can do. I'm not going to knock it. However, it's not Brett Booth. So immediately I was a bit like, mm, is it actually, is it actually going to carry on being good? It's the same writer, um, and the storyline continues being okay, um, except a few slightly odd things happen. And I think at this stage it's probably worth me highlighting why I keep on referring to Valiant pre-2018 and post-2018. So in 2018, Valiant was purchased by DMG Entertainment. And there's a lot of controversy about how they did it and whether they should have done it and so on and so forth. That's actually not a bad cover. Yeah, come on. That, that's okay. Um, and the thing about DMG owning it um, and buying Valiant is that there's... I think there's an argument to be had that they didn't have the comic narrative um, at, the, at the heart of their interest. And instead they were more interested in diversifying the Valiant properties into other franchises and sort of changing the narrative scope and just trying to basically milk it for more money. Oh, by the way, we have Exo Manowar turning up here. And I think, to be honest, that kind of feels slightly apparent, that the fact that DMG took it over and that the the nature of the hardcovers and the storylines themselves started to change quite a lot. I think that starts to become quite apparent the more and more one reads Valiant comics. So, for example, here's the dust jacket again. Everything with a white spine, in my mind, is kind of the DMG era. And to be honest, everything with a white spine has been a noticeable dip in quality from Valiant's sort of high point. Um, so, like, this white spine era is another way of saying the post-2018 era, which is another way of saying the post-Dinesh um, Samdasani era, and the and is now the DMG era, when DMG own it. And they don't necessarily have the same kind of creative vision that the original founders did. Uh, to give you an idea of this, in issues 6, 7, and 8, the storyline starts getting a little bit messy and a little bit woolly. It also starts introducing characters that we actually saw in the Bloodshot um, in the Bloodshot movie. So this guy here is Wilfred Wiggins, who's played by I don't know the actor's name, some some British dude in the um, Bloodshot movie, and he's cool in the Bloodshot movie is kind of like slightly comic relief, kind of like the man in the chair, the the brains, the genius, that sort of thing. But this this art, this picture, this is clearly designed around the actor and the character from the movie. In the same way that um, a lot of comics in the Ultimate Marvel era kind of like aimed to ape or copy particular actors that they wanted to play the roles. In this case, we've got this guy who is clearly the actor from the movies. And his tone and his approach and everything about it is just kind of, it's kind of a bit skewed and kind of a little bit off. Um, so this is Brett Booth artwork. You can tell this. This is issue 10, I think. Um, and it's just, I don't know, I just personally found it a little bit irritating that we're now having the movies influencing the comics rather than the other way around. And in addition to that, the storyline was not great. It was a little bit disjointed. It was a little bit unsatisfying. Return of Rampage. Not a spoiler, but there we are. Um, and it was just a little bit like, yeah, it, it was kind of frustrating. I can see some tonal differences in the Valiant universe in the latter half here with like jokey dialogue, sidekick characters kind of shifts in the bloodshot tone. I mean, this starts to feel and look a little bit like a sitcom, and it's just not really what I expect from my bloodshot. Um, in addition to that, um, Exo Manowar was in here, which I mentioned earlier. And, like, I don't know much about Exo Manowar, but as far as I gather, he didn't used to talk to his suit, and his suit wasn't some artificial intelligence that talked to him back. But now that appears to be the case. And again, I'm concerned that's a DMG-era decision to kind of have, like, a banter, buddy cop relationship between... Um, Exo Manowar and the voice in the suit um, because I'm not aware of that previously being a thing we'll see, we'll see but anyway, um, storyline continues the art picks up a little bit and continues to be reasonably strong the storyline however definitely dips and goes off a cliff and after the strong the strong opening of the first um, six issues this is a little bit disappointing um, and similarly, my concerns about the introduction of someone like Wilfred Wiggins and using the movies to influence the comic, it just feels kind of like, I don't know, feel like kind of put the cart before the horse. Anyway, this is issue 12, and then issue 12 ends with a little spin-off side story here, which is very short, it's literally um, one, two, three, four, four pages long. Um, and there's a big hoopla about, oh, issue 12 includes this extra story called The Hunted. And the reason that's a big, a big deal is because it's written by Benny Potter, who's the guy behind the Comic Story and YouTube channel. If you're not familiar with the Comic Story, check it out on YouTube. Just click away from this video and have a look at it. Um, this is hugely popular. He's got millions of subs, millions of views. 
and now because he's so popular he's actually getting tasked to like write like little bits of comic bits and pieces here which is kind of the dream come true and i don't like his channel at all the guy seems like a really nice guy but his channel is essentially him going through comic book storylines beat by beat by beat spoiling everything and just telling you what happens in the comic Watching a video that tells you what happens in a comic is not the same as reading a comic. And I personally just don't have the time for it and I wouldn't recommend it to people. But he has got a cool voice. He does seem to be like a nice guy and massive props to him for doing well with, uh, with what he's done. So that's that four issues. Sorry, four page um, little small issue. And then we have the gallery. Uh, like I say here, it's got some like script notes that kind of describe how they came up with the various scenes and the various bits and pieces. Okay. So on that note, um, sorry to have gone so long guys, but I felt I had a little bit more to talk about on this one than I normally do. This is the last bit of Bloodshot I have in my collection. Now there are no further Bloodshot issues that have come out, although at the time of filming this, there is a new series on the horizon called Bloodshot Unleashed. I don't know what that's going to be like, I don't know what that's going to be about. Um, hopefully it continues being in part of the sort of the main continuity. Oh, I should have mentioned this particular hardcover is set after Bloodshot Salvation, so again... Bloodshot Rising Spirit we talked about last week appears to be completely kind of irrelevant to the larger idea of how these things work. Um, but yeah, so read this, enjoyed it, loved the artwork for the first half, loved the storyline for the first half. Then it starts to get a little bit messy and fragmented towards the end. I don't know if that's confined just to Bloodshot or if that's really more indicative of a later era Valiant comics. I felt something si similar with the Harbinger series where um, Secret Weapons and Harbinger Wars 2, well... Hopping Wars 2 is okay, but Secret Weapons and Live Wire were pretty weak. Um, and so I'm just kind of like, mm, let, let's see Let's see. the more I read what my opinion is of DMG Entertainment's takeover of the various Valiant franchises. Um, so this is the comic that we read today. What I'm going to do in just a moment is I'm going to show you how now Bloodshot fits into the reading map that I've been kind of roughly making in the background. Uh, we've done Harbinger, I'll talk about Bloodshot in a second. But before we flip over to that, just to say guys, that in next week's video, now that I've finished all the Bloodshot family of comics down this side, and I've done the Harbinger side, I'm now going to jump into Exo Manowar, which means the thing that I'll be reading for next week will be Exo Manowar Deluxe Edition Volume 1. And if you want to read along, please do. Um, otherwise, let's have a look at our reading map and see where we've got to. All right, so as promised, um, as I did after the video on the Harbinger, where I finished the Harbinger thread of Valiant comics, um, what I did then is I actually showed you guys the um, kind of very rough draft reading map that I'm kind of building up in my own head for Valiant comics. And I figured now that we've just finished the Bloodshot thread, um, I might as well show you how that's coming along. So um, here we have the map. Getting a bit messy and chaotic. I haven't tidied it up since last time, to be honest, but it's been it's been crazy in my uh, in my day job. So. Um, on the on the left hand side here, all these things we've got all the Harbinger ones, but now we've got the right hand side, so the Bloodshot ones. So let's dive in here. We've got Bloodshot um, oversized hardcover one, which leads into Harbinger Wars. We've already covered those way back when, and then since then, more recently, we've been looking at Bloodshot Deluxe Edition two. We've looked at um, the Valiant, which is the event that comes next. Bloodshot Reborn, and then Bloodshot Reborn Volume two. And then that goes into Bloodshot Salvation. Bloodshot Salvation leads right into the one we were just talking about earlier today, which is Bloodshot 2019 on that maxi series. And here on the side, we have the uncollected Bloodshot Rising Spirit. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with this because not only is it not collected, um, which obviously somehow I want to be able to indicate the ones that aren't collected on this map as well. So people will know which ones are deluxe editions you can get from Amazon and which ones are single issues you have to track down. But as well as that, this technically is like it's a prequel isn't it like it's set way before bloodshot one so maybe it should be up here somewhere um i don't know uh, i don't know i mean because things it came out around about here so i'm still kind of working out how i'm going to map this how i'm going to make it look or maybe i'll put this in a dotted circle or have dotted lines to it but yeah this is how the map is coming on so starting off here with harbinger and bloodshot the harbinger wars connecting the two then we've got all the harbinger ones with the three threads coming out of volume two and then we've just got Bloodshot, which is actually a nice, singular, consistent read there. Um, still a little bit confused as to what happens between this volume and this volume. So between um, Bloodshot Hardcover Deluxe 2 and The Valiant. Because at some point here, Bloodshot gets hired by MI6. So I still need to work out what's going on there. But the rest of it all makes really good sense. Um, and that is a nice, pretty straightforward update 
to my Valiant reading map. Don't worry, guys, when this is done, um, I'll make it available if people want it. Um, if you don't want it, that's absolutely fine. But um, yeah, it's there. So uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. As always, please like, comment, subscribe. As always, please follow me on Twitter at I am Thomas Judge, where I will post uh, a daily review of whatever comics I've been reading. You can get an idea of what I'm up to on the channel. Um, and as always, please support the channel by heading over to Amazon.com and checking out my prose novel about superheroes. It's a completely original piece of work. The first episode in it is called Arrivals, and the series as a whole is called No Gods or Kings. You can find an excerpt of that on my website, nogodsorkings.com. Until next time, everybody, stay classy.